This repository has three packages, footer, which is a library of React components, header, which is a library of React components, and an application using Remix, uh, which uses both uh, footer and header, okay? So let's add Learner to this repository. This created the Learner.json file at the root. One of the things new learner versions can do is to run tasks via Next, which is a very powerful and flexible build system. So let's turn this on. We also need to add a Next as a dependency in the root package.json file. A Next is small, so it won't significantly increase the size of your node modules. The first problem learner solves is it allows different projects in the same repository to import each other or to see each other without having to be published to a registry, right? Basically, from the point of view of the Remix app that we have, the header dependency should point to the contents of the header package. The command that does it is called learner bootstrap. So let's run it. Now let's examine the node modules of, uh, of our Remix app. And we can see that there is a header package over here, and it's a symlink of the header uh, package we have in our repo. Now the packages we have can see each other, so let's try to build them. Right? Uh, we could do it by running the learner run build command, which is going to tell learner find all the packages in this workspace that have the build and PM script defined, right? And invoke those build and PM scripts and invoke them in topological order, meaning that because the Remix app depends on, fed, uh, on header and footer, uh, build header and footer first, right? And then build the Remix app. And we have to do it in this way because the build process for the Remix app needs the dist folders that the build processes for header and footer uh, would create. I can also run tests in the same fashion and Learner will run the test targets, the test and PM scripts in a topological order as well. It's starting from header and footer and then testing uh, Remix app. And here it's actually a problem, right? We don't need uh, tests to be run in this order because tests don't depend on each other. And imposing any order, any sorting would only make things slower. Right? So we can fix it by passing no sort, uh, which will tell learner, don't worry about order, just do it as fast as you can. Running any command right now will execute all the tasks every time, even when nothing changed. Like I can run tests five times in a row and every single time learner is going to run them, right? Uh, we can do better than this, right? In our case, right now, Learner is delegating tasks running to an X. And an X has the most banal tested sophisticated computation caching system among uh, monorepo tools, right? The only thing we need to do to fix it is just to tell an X cache tests and cache builds. So let's do it. Let's run an X in it and open the generated next.json file. Uh, we can ignore some of the other things in here. The only the configuration option we care about is cacheable operations. So let's say test and build are both cacheable. To show that it works, uh, let's run the test command again. Uh, but this time we are going to scope it to a single project uh, to, to see the terminal output better. All right, so let's run the test command for the header package. The first time it's going to run it and cache the results. And the second time is instant uh, because it replayed uh, the results uh, from cache. And this includes both uh, the file artifacts and the terminal output. In general, of learner via NX, it's pretty good at figuring out what needs to be cached without any configuration. There are some reasonable defaults, but once in a while you need to help it out. Like in this case, the Remix app is going to create two folders, uh, which is build and public build, right? And the public build folder is just not the default that NX or learner has, right? So we need to help it out. To do that, we need to add the NX property to the package.json file of uh, the Remix app we have, right? And there we can add some metadata to the NPM scripts that this project has. For example, we can list a sort of outputs, which is basically folders and files that the build script would create. Now let's run the build command again. The first time it's going to run all the tasks and cache the file artifacts and the terminal outputs. Uh, now let's delete the build folder. Uh, and uh, such as we can see it being restored from cache. Let's run the command again. As you can see, the command is fast, it's instant, right? And the build folder was restored from cache. At a side note, right now we're using local cache, uh, meaning 
that all the cache artifacts are stored only on my machine, right? Uh, by default, they are stored in node modules over here. Uh, but it's also trivial to set it up such that the cache will be shared with your coworkers, with your CI agents, or with anyone else, really, right? Uh, and with that type of setup, uh, while using Learner, you'll never build or test the same thing twice. We're making good progress, but there are a few problems left to be solved. First, we need to remember to pass no sort when running tests because otherwise the command will be unnecessarily slow. And we need to remember to build the packages, the dependencies of the Remix app before we run the dev target for the Remix app. And the reason is the dev target requires the header and the footer to be compiled, right? That's a problem, let's fix it. To do that, we need to define two invariants in the next JSON, right? The first one is going to say that before learner via next, run the build and PM script for a given project, it needs to make sure that the dependencies are either built or restored from cache. Let's define a similar invariant for dev. With this setup, learner run test will run the three test targets as fast as it can without any constraints. Uh, the build command is going to build the header and the footer first before building the remix app. And the dev command will make sure that the header and footer packages are built such that the dev server actually can run. Last but not least, Learner is the ultimate tool for publishing multiple packages from the same repo. Right? It has a lot of options that covers all sorts of workflows. Right? So I'm going to show you sort of the simplest one just to you know, give you a taste of what it's like. And this workspace, header and footer are two libraries, so it makes sense for us to publish them to a registry such that other folks can consume them. Uh, the Remix application is not an NPM package. There is no reason for us to, to, to publish it, and that's why it, it, it's marked as private, right? So what I'm going to do right now, I'm going to run learner publish no private, uh, which is going to tell learner, publish all the packages that have changed since the last release, as that are not private, right? To publish header and footer in this case, right? I can select the version, right? And after that, what Learner is going to do is going to make a commit uh, corresponding to this release. It's going to tag it. It's going to push the commit and the tag. And it's going to publish uh, the two packages to a registry. In this case, I'm using, I'm using local registry. That's why the publish command worked. Now, this concludes our quick overview of Learner. Please give it a try.